My, my, my. I just got caught up in the moment. Did you get caught up in a moment, church? My, my, my. I've been thinking and I've been praying a lot you know, because of the situation with my wife. She sends her love, but she covets your prayers. Please don't forget her. But God began to show me something. That every time we go through these things in our lives, the enemy means to destroy us, but God means to build us up. The Word of God says the truth himself shall make you free. Too many times God's people are on the defense when they should be on the offense. So I began to search the Word and I began to see in the Word that God knew we would need supernatural power. He knew it from the very beginning. Open your Bibles with me, 1 John, 3rd chapter, please. 1 John, 3rd. Now, probably a lot of you read this over and over again, but it, it's, it's, I want it to become revelation. I don't want it to become teaching. I want it to become revelation. Look at the 8th verse of the third chapter. I'm reading out of the Amplified. It says, but he who commits sin, who practices evil doing, is of the devil. Takes his character from the evil one. For the devil is sinned, violated in divine, the divine law from the beginning. Now here's the key, the B part of this verse. The reason the Son of God was made manifest visible was to undo to wound you're not reading the same Bible I'm reading it didn't say wound it says destroy was to undo destroy loosen and dissolve the works of the devil has done he didn't just come here to wound the enemy or to inflict pain upon him, but to defeat him and destroy him. Go to John, Gospel of John, the eighth chapter, quickly. Come on. What, what is 1 John 4.4? 4? You should know that off the top of your head. What is it? What's 1 John 4.4? 4? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What does that literally mean? It's not there, something for you to blow smoke. Come on. It's something for you to believe that it's true. So when you begin to love God and you begin to pour your love out on God, something happens around you. Even though you're going through valleys and storms, God is covering you. God is protecting you. God is keeping you. Touch your neighbor and say, this too shall pass. These things are going to pass in your life. You're not going to, you're going through the situation. And when you go through the situation, it just becomes a memory. Oh, come on. Listen, listen, John, the 8th chapter, 42nd verse. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I self of myself, but he sent me. Amplified Bible said, Jesus said to him, If God were your father, you would love me and respect me and welcome me gladly. For I proceeded, came forth from God out of his very presence. I did not even come on my own authority, over my own accord, as self-appointed, but he sent me. 
He sent God, the Father, sent the Son for a purpose that he may destroy the work of the devil. Come on, somebody. Everything had failed. Everything, mankind was a mess. And Jesus stepped up and said, what are we going to do, Father? And he said, there's only one more thing to do. I have to send you as the sacrificial lamb. Would you do that? And Jesus accepted it willingly. Come on. Why? Because he loves you. How many know that Jesus loves you? 1 John 4.18, there is no fear in love. Dread does not exist. But perfect, complete, full-grown love drives out fear. Because fear involves the expectation of divine punishment. So the one who is afraid of God's judgment is not perfected in love. And has not grown into a sufficient understanding of God's love. If anything you understand, I want you to understand God's love. Understand his love. Go to 7th chapter of the Gospel of John. Quickly. Touch your name and say, I'm a winner today. Come on. Mm, I'm a winner. Every day you're a winner. Why? Not because you're who you are. It's because whose you are. You belong to the Lord. 28 verse. Look. John 7, 28. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, You both know me, and you know whence I am. I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom you know not, but I know him for I am from him, and he had sent me. He had a divine purpose to destroy the works of the devil, to destroy everything the devil does. Go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, quickly. Come on. Tenth verse. In conclusion, in the end, in what's said, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him, which has boundless might provides. Draw your strength from the Lord. Why? Because the greater one is living inside of you. If you don't have this, listen to me. When you're going through the storm, you can't make it on your own. When you're going through the battles, you'll never make it on your own. You need to draw. That's why people commit suicide, become drug addicts, become drunkards, because they can't make it on their own. But the greater one lives inside of us. The spiritual strength of the greater one empowers us to tap on his strength so we can become more than conquerors in him. Somebody shout yes and give him praise. John. 14, 6 says, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto him only by Jesus. He is the way. Can't do it on your own, church. Can't do it on your own. I've tried it on my own. Can't make it. But when your faith is strong and you've gotten to the love of him, oh, Philippians, second chapter, quickly go there. How many love God's word? Jesus had a divine commission. He came as man, but he had divine direction from the Father. He stripped himself of his divinity and came as man. Look at Philippians, second chapter, look at six verse. Who being the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. That's who he is. Now, the real amplified Bible, this is what it says, who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness and the attributes which makes God God, did not think his equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retained, but stripped himself. You know what he did? He stripped himself for you and for me. 
stripped himself of all privileges. I mean, he could have walked on this earth. He didn't have to go fast 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't have to convince people who he was. He who he was because he was God's son. He was the Theophany, the visible manifestation of God in the flesh. That's who he was. But mankind does not recognize him for who he was. We come to church to hang out. 80% of this word that I'm bringing, you'll forget by the time you get to your car. My job is to impress this, not only in your mind, but in your heart. So then when you do meet someone, it's the light of Christ. The word of God. You don't have to stand on a, on a stool and preach to your family. Walk into the room and be a light. Don't behave like they behave if they're unsaved. Don't do the things that they do. Come on, because they're unsaved. You stand, don't be self-righteous. Be God person. Be anointed from the Holy Ghost. Let it drain upon you through the power of the Holy Spirit. How many could say amen to that? So I came out of the streets. I was just sharing with some of the pastors in the back. I came out of the streets in New York. My best friend died in my arms. Three bullet holes in his chest. My other friend. I was at his bridal party. They found him dead, murdered. Police came and dragged me out of bed at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Took me to the police station and handcuffed me to the bullpen. Every time they walk by, they can't do that no more. It's, I mean, you can't even look at somebody crooked now as a cop. Come on. They're taking pictures of you. Let a cop do his job. I got a real amen. I got one amen from that. Listen to me. Those guys are out there doing a job to save you. Okay? Appreciate them. Appreciate the police and the law enforcement. Don't listen to this nonsense that they're beating. Listen to me. What would you do if you heard your best friend got killed and you were a police officer? Something would happen in, in, in front of you. You would immediately draw your weapon. Come on. They have fear for their life. They have families and children too. I was a New York City fireman for 13 years. I had eight stitches on my eye. I got shot at. The night they killed Martin Luther King, we had 22 bullet holes in our, in our, on our rig. I stretched the line into a, into a building and fought a fire, knocking down the fire in every room. I got to the back porch, and the whole side of the door got blown away. It was a guy standing on a roof pumping shotgun shells at me. How would you like to do your job? And as you were moving the line in, you try to get into a doorway of an abandoned building and you fall through the floor to the next story below because they cut a hole in the floor and covered it with a piece of rug. How would you like to see your best friend's shoulder get busted right through his coat and the bone sticking out because he caught the door with his arm? That's what's out there. Too much hate out there. It's time we love him more. How many could say amen to that? Come on. We pulled one night into a building. We got a, we got a call that there was a, a car fire in a building, uh, in front of a building, and we pulled into the street. I'll never forget this. In those days, we rode the back step. And I looked behind me, and two cars closed off the street behind us. I looked on the side of the rig. Two more cars closed the front of it, all by ourselves. And they opened up some six-story tenements, commodes, beer cans. They take a beer can, fill it halfway up with cement and then peel it down and scale it at you. How would you like to respond and try to do your job to sa save someone's life and they're shooting at you? Oh, it got quiet in here. You better thank God that you're in the house of God. You better thank God that Jesus covers you. Come on, somebody. I'm here because he covered me and protected me. And I thank God. Listen to me. I, I was so hateful until Jesus saved me. I 
I was so hateful, full of hate and bitterness. But he took that out of me. He took it out of me. Showed me love. When I look at unsaved people, all I see is a lost soul. All I want to see them is serve God and love the Lord. How many receiving this today? Let me see your hands. You're receiving it. I'm giving you my heart. I'm telling you, listen to me. That night that my friend died in my arms, he didn't have to die. He chose to die. Two men came into his club and shot, killed somebody. It was a professional assassination. And he, he owned the club. He ran out, and I told him, don't do that. He ran out through the, they ran out through the side door. He followed them out, and I said, don't do that, Paulie, please. And he ran, was running to catch him. And when I put my hand on the doorknob, I heard three shots. I pulled the door open, and he fell in my arms. He died right there in my arms. Choose right. It says in the book of Deuteronomy, this day is set before you life and death. Therefore, choose life. Choose a blessing instead of a curse. Because if you choose a curse and you're married and you have children, the curse follows your children. It follows your children. You need to pray for your kids. Pray for your family. Somebody say amen. I'm a, I want you to receive this. God, help me. Hallelujah. Jesus was the living word. He came in the flesh. Go to the Gospel of John, first chapter. I have so much of the word in me. So much of the fire of God. I got no room for nothing else. John, the first chapter, first verse, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Wasn't a God, He was God. Open up the Jehovah Witness Bible, and it says He was a God. He's not a God, He is God. The same was in the beginning with God. He was with God. He looked down and seen everything. Then when God said, let there be light, the sun was standing right next to him. Somebody say amen. amen. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Come on, somebody. Look at the 14th verse. Drop down to the 14th verse. And the word was made flesh. He is the word. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Woo! I love it. I love it. Go to Luke, the fourth chapter, with me. I love the word. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. You want some strength in your life? Receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive that power. Holy Ghost is here for you. Hallelujah. Look at four, Luke 4, first verse. And Jesus, full, being full of the Holy Ghost, full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Touch your name, Zach. I'll be led of the Spirit. Too much of us are led by our own ideas. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. In those days, he did, not, he di he did eat nothing. And when it, they were ended, he afterward hungered. My God. Think about who he is. Think about it. God the Father anointed him with the Holy Ghost. He was fully equipped to destroy Satan's power. Don't you think if the God the Father knew to anoint his own son and fully equip him, don't you think God the Father would anoint his children? Understand the Father would never have sent Jesus here without the power to destroy Satan. How many have children? Let me see. Raise your hand. Children. Would you send your kid out unprotected from the things of the world? I mean, you tell them, don't talk to strangers. Don't go here. Don't do that. 
a good parent. You cover your children. You protect your children. You want your children to be safe. Amen. No matter what. Not only from, from uh, 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 physical stuff, but spiritual stuff. You want them to be safe. Don't do this. Don't do that. You protect them. What makes you think the father won't do that? What makes you think the father won't do that for you? Come on. How much? Listen. Jesus was led 40 days. He didn't have to go and fast and pray for 40 days and 40 nights. He could have called on a whole legion of angels to come and bail him out and to help him and to serve him. Come on. He didn't have to ride in on Palm Sunday on the back of a jackass. He could have rode in on a stallion that was gilded with gold. But he chose to come in that way through the sheep gate to show us. Come on, somebody. Somebody shout yes and give him praise. Huh. He came as our example. He was tried and tested in 40 days. He said, but the word says, man shall not live by bread alone. But the word says, thou shalt not be tempted in the wilderness. He quoted the word back to the enemy. Did you see the enemy hurt him? No. Did you see the enemy come against him? No. Why? Because the word came out of his mouth. The word was his shield and his buckler. It was his sword that kept the enemy at bay. Could you say amen to that? It was the word that flowed out of the mouth of Jesus to protect. You got problems? Start claiming the word. Start speaking the word. Thou shalt go before me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You prepare us a table for me in the midst of my enemies. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a praise. Give him, come on, give him honor. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Listen. It was tried and tested. Overcame Satan. With the anointing. See, a lot of people are gifted, but not many are anointed. I look at, my wife said to me, why won't you look at Christian television? I said, because I see gifts, I don't see anointing. Now you put a guy on like Brother Cirillo, I'll look at him all day. You put a guy on like Rodney Howard Brown, I'll look at him all day. I'll look at the Word. You don't have to preach three hours to bring the Word. One Word will penetrate your heart. One Word could turn your life around. One word could change your direction in your life as a man and woman of God. One word heals the body of Christ. Somebody shout yes and give him praise. One word. Mm. Now, let me, listen, after the 40 days, why did the enemy flee from Jesus? Because he's seen that the word was his buckler. And he never came back to attack him again like that. Nowhere in the Bible it says that the enemy came to Jesus and, 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 and questioned his validity. In fact, he could have came back when Jesus was eating. Because Jesus basically right there was out of the anointed. When you, when you eat, you're not anointed. Let me tell you. I know I'm not. Hallelujah. I like my food. He could have came back, but he didn't. He wouldn't come back because he knew the Word was around him. The Word was in him. He was the Word. See, what happened is Jesus gave the devil a revelation. <laughs> he gave him a revelation that he was the word and he was arguing with the word and you can't argue with the word come on somebody ha! Ah! give him praise give the Lord praise can I read you one more scripture can we go over one more how many getting this how many getting this today hallelujah okay okay go to Luke the fourth chapter with me quickly Luke 4 look at verse 14 Look at, the, I'm reading out of the Amplified. 
Then Jesus went back full of and under the power, under the power of the Holy Spirit into Galilee. And the fame of him spread through the whole region round about. So what, what happened is Jesus went from being baptized to meeting the devil and defeating him to his ministry. He wasn't confused. He was anointed. Jesus never was confused. And basically, he very rarely asked the question. He knew the answers to everything. And when he did ask a question, he wanted to know if you knew. Are you receiving what I'm saying? When he asked the question, Ten lepers came to him. He healed all ten. And he waited to see who was going to be thankful. All nine walked away. But only one came back. And Jesus asked the question. He knew. He asked the question, where are the other nine? And he made that tenth one whole. Great to be healed, but be made whole is even better. Can somebody say amen and give him praise. Come on.